Candy corn. Whether you hate it or love it, it is definitely a Halloween candy staple. It's actually the most popular candy in some states. Its shape and its size is in the form of imitating a piece of real corn with a white tip, an orange body, and a yellow bottom. Candy corn saw the light of day in 1888 when a man by the name of George Renninger came up with the recipe and the idea for it while he worked at the Wonderly Candy Company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As about half of Americans back then were farmers and worked in agriculture, a lot of candy makers were trying to make fun candy for the rural folks of America. So George Renninger came up with this idea of candy corn, but he didn't call it candy corn at the time. He called it chicken feed, because back then, corn wasn't seen as people food as it is today. Now, corn became more of a people food as hybrids of sweet corn began to grow and it wasn't seen as just uh, food for cattle and chickens. Even today, 99% of corn that is grown is called field corn and it's meant to feed cattle, chickens, or get turned into corn syrup and all that kind of stuff. So only 1% of corn that is grown is used for human consumption. So field corn, sweet corn, two totally different things. Much like how popping corn for popcorn is a different thing as well. So the world of corn is highly diverse. There's your little corn lesson for today. So 10 years later, after candy corn was birthed into the world, in 1898, the larger candy company, Golitz, bought the recipe for candy corn and this is when candy corn really took off because it was mass produced by Golitz. So Golitz bought the recipe for candy corn and they described it as a buttercream candy. So candy corn is made of a mix of sugar and corn syrup and a few other ingredients. And then it's cooked into a liquid. And then while it's in that liquid state, they pour marshmallows and fondant into the mix, and all of this makes the candy a lot more soft. And then the mix is made into the three different colors, the white, the orange, and the yellow. And then they have these molds that are in the shape of the corn kernels. So then there's three passes of each color. So the first pass is the white, then the second pass is the orange, and then the last pass is the yellow. And then it's not baked or anything, it's just sits there and it just dries. So back then, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they'd take the candy corn that was dried and put it all in wooden barrels and boxes and all that, and they would ship it out. Candy corn at this time really didn't have a long shelf life, so candy corn really couldn't be shipped too far without it spoiling. It was mostly sold as a bulk candy, really fairly cheap candy, penny candy as some people call it, where you could get a lot of it for very little money. And it'd be in barrels and drug stores and bulk candy shops and so on and so forth. This is where the candy corn got highly popular. It was seen everywhere. So as candy corn got popular, a lot of other candy companies saw this and they wanted to reap the successful rewards as well. So they were making knockoff versions of candy corn such as candy turnips, candy pumpkins, candy chestnuts, and my favorite, candy four-leaf clovers. And uh, none of them really saw the success of candy corn though. By the 1920s, candy corn was still having a relation with chickens and the agricultural world as packages of the candy had a rooster on the front and it read, King of the Candy Corn Fields. And this is where candy corn went from the name chicken feed to candy corn. By the 1940s, as food was being able to be packaged and preserved for much longer amounts of time, candy corn as well was being bagged in clear cellophane bags, and it was able to be shipped and sold a lot further than it was before. Candy corn was sold year-round, just not around Halloween. Being that candy corn was a very, very popular and seen candy all throughout the year, Halloween would come around, and during the 1950s, as Halloween was becoming more of a candy-geared holiday, 
Candy corn just kind of snuck its way in and became the main focus candy during the Halloween. So that's the tie-in. Whenever uh, Halloween is around, you always think of candy corn. It all started around the 1950s. By 1951, the Golitz Candy Company had 12 factories across the United States making candy corn. So fast forwarding all the way up to today. Candy corn is being sold anywhere and everywhere, especially during the Halloween season. Candy corn, with its creamy, mellow cream vanilla taste, it's a fun treat that young and old still enjoy to this day. And that is your brief history of candy corn. (laughs) 